Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify, the fast, lean learning machine, the fastest learning, most revenue generating personalization platform for e-commerce. Welcome to another episode in the second series of the e-commerce growth show podcast. You can find out all the details at segmentify.com forward slash podcast. Now we've already had episodes about building your brand, SEO and more. So make sure you check them all out. I'm Chloe Thomas, co-host of this episode. So I think it's about time we got Phil Kay from Segmentify on to talk about what's coming up today. Hello, Phil. Hey, Chloe. It's nice to be back with you again. I've been really, really impressed with what you've done on the podcast in my absence. I'm working on it slowly. You'll probably hear it um, as it kind of uh, begins and I hopefully get better as, as each one goes on. But I must admit, I, I, was, I was taught well. I had a very good mentor. Not, <laughs> you, not mentioning names. <laughs> you flatter me, sir. And you have had on some great guests, haven't you, over the last couple yeah, of weeks? Yeah, we have actually. We've, um, I, I think you, you probably know from what um, some of them uh, have been coming out but we obviously COVID has been a, a, an awful time for so many um, but it has given us an opportunity to use the the growth show to um, expose some of the guys that have um, become out of work or you know their, their work has dropped as a consultant and so on so we've used it to, to help um, gain some exposure for them um, and uh, yeah so I've been really privileged to do that as well as obviously you know dip into more thought leadership from tech suppliers like Kineo. Um, but uh, yeah, getting some e-commerce managers on um, and some consultants has been really interesting as well. It adds another, another angle to it all, doesn't it? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, we're here today um, to talk to James from Akinio. So why did you want to include him in the series? Well, um, I don't know. I don't know about you. I don't know about, about the guys listening, but I don't actually know too much about Akinio and what Akinio does. And the whole world of PIM and product information management and so on. So I thought, first of all, first and foremost, this, it would be great to get somebody like James to talk to everybody about what exactly that world is. And also, I I really like the guys. You know, um, I met, um, I think it was, I met Terry, first of all, Terry Bishop. And uh, I must admit, he's a bit of a pro surfer. So I was a little bit, I was a little bit envious. I was sat in the, uh, sat in a Costa Coffee with him just down the road from the, the office in, in London. And he was talking about how he can, how he goes down to the wave in Bristol and spends his forty pound and does barrels and all that for hours on end. I was just like, ah, you know, I'm forty six. I can't even get up on a board yet. Still, you know, just like, Grr. so I've got to try and grab him one day after the back of this. Say, look, you know, we've done a podcast with you, so now you've got to do me a favour and uh, you know, take me out and treat me to a, you know, some some training on the waves down at the wave or something. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're having a Kineo on purely in order for you to be able to persuade one of their team to take you surfing absolutely terry you better be listening <laughs> but more seriously it's because him is one of those areas which most people haven't heard of I and mean, i know i've i've certainly been lacking in my knowledge in that area i know you know you you've said you are and i think it's the same for a lot of e-commerce businesses yeah completely and i think if if, if anyone doesn't understand fully what pim is about um, I think it's one of those things we need to learn more about and certainly explore um, in terms of whether there's a need for it for your business. So I thought that would be a really important thing to bring to the table for the e-commerce growth show. Excellent. Well, look, let's let's get our guest on so he can start us, start our learning process. For sure. It's time to welcome our guest. James Barlow is the country manager for the UK and Ireland at Akinio. That means he spends his days helping e-commerce businesses to streamline and automate their product information management. Hello, James. Hi, Chloe. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Very good. Hey, James. Hey, Phil. How you doing? You good? Yeah, good. Getting used to life in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, it's great to have you, James. Um, why don't we start with a quick question around uh, how you came to start your role at Akinio? <laughs> um, it's a bit of a sliding doors moment, actually. So um, I've been in software for the last 10 years, not necessarily, well, uh, I wasn't working directly for an e-commerce vendor until uh, the past few years with Akinio. Um, and it's actually more of a story about my wife than, than myself. So <laughs> going oh, back... Good. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, so going back a few years, um, my wife had just started a job. Um, I won't mention the name, but um, you would all know it. Uh, a, a very large UK-based um, 
fashion retailer, uh, and she'd actually joined the merchandising team. So it was her role primarily to liaise with the buying team to get all of the information from the suppliers, um, liaise with the photography team to get all of the assets, and then she'd formulate all of the product data ready to hit go live and publish onto the website um now unfortunately for her um she was three weeks in and made a pretty significant cock up um i'm not sure how familiar either of you are with kanye west's adidas yeezys the trainers not at all not in the slightest that sorry <laughs> That's okay. They're, they're not my style either. But um, going back a few going back a few years, they were the fastest selling trainer in the world. Um, wow. Unfortunately for Mrs. Barlow, what she did three weeks into her new job is accidentally launch um, the the new Adidas um, Yeezys two weeks before the official go live. So. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, but before there was any stock in the warehouse, before any marketing activation had taken place. So, uh, needless to say, it was a pretty big deal. Um, now, being the loving husband that I am, I waited for the panic stations and the emotions to die down a bit and then asked her how she made the mistake. Uh, and what she showed me was was crazy. I mean, the, the, the fact that she was three weeks into a new role, um, no major level of seniority within the team, and the fact that she, it was in her hand to potentially make that error, um, what she showed me was a, a huge, messy spreadsheet where every single product this organization sold bear in mind there are over a one billion a pound uh, a year turnover business every every single product they sold was on a spreadsheet and in fact the actual how the error was made in her accidentally launching the product um was in one column of the spreadsheet there needed to be either a tick or a cross the ticks meant that that goes live onto the website the cross means that it doesn't um so it was that uh, small of a an error uh, which caused obviously a huge business impact and the reason why i say it was a sliding doors moment is admittedly i'd never heard of pim i'd, I'd not heard of akinio um and they approached me to, to help them start up operations in the uk so um hugely coincidental that i could see firsthand or uh, i guess at least secondhand um the need for that piece of software in the business and i guess that's where the, the story around akinio started um i packed my bags and moved back down south to join them Amazing. So just quick questions here then. I mean, did is the client now a customer? So so we moved so so we were actually based, in fact I won't say where we were based because that's a pretty clear <laughs> in, in, indication of who that retailer was. Um no, but thankfully, um my wife is now working for uh one of our customers, Fossil, who are an Akinio customer. So a full full circle. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So Today, then, we're going to talk about product information management. I mean, I really don't know much at all about that myself, so I'm really interested to hear more about it. So from a, from a kind of an opening question point of view, what exactly is PIM, a PIM, or product information management system? Uh, yeah, I think that's that's a great question and one that you can, as you can probably imagine, the, the fact that you're both in e-commerce and um, for you, Phil, you're not um, that well-versed yet in, in PIM. Um, I think maybe just to clarify from the start off, because there's a myriad of different acronyms that are in our industry. Um, you've already mentioned PIM stands for Product Information Management. Uh, if people start, if people start doing the rounds, they may also see um, just to make things even more complicated. A new acronym, which is PXM. So PXM stands for Product Experience Management. So just to clarify the difference between the two. Their product experience management is really the practice and the theory behind creating a great experience for your consumer when they come onto your website or your mobile app or, or you're in your store. So if you think about a con typical consumer's journey, so it first starts with them actually trying to find your brand and your product. Then it comes down to whether or not they deem that product suitable for their needs. And finally, it's the purchasing decision. So that's the the overall practice is how do we make that experience as pain-free and as, um, as effective as possible? Now, the PIM is actually the vehicle that allows you to build that experience. So in the most basic terms, it's a piece of software that gathers all potential pieces of product information, right from dimensions, technical attributes, um, images, SEO information, it brings that all under one roof and just allows uh, your teams or makes your teams a lot easier because it will actually do a lot of the heavy lifting and managing and creating that data for you so that it's ready to automatically be pushed out to all of your sales channels. 
So the the, the PIM would be yeah. the perfect solution to all the issues your wife had at that not to be named retailer <laughs> in terms of it would have made her job easier and it would have enabled the, the controls to be in place that that type of error could never have happened. It, exactly. So I'm not sure if um, either of you saw in the news, I think it was last year, so Harrods, um, and I can say that name because it was in the press. Um, Harrods accidentally sold hundreds of designer handbags that were meant to be a thousand pounds. Um, they sold them for, I'm not sure if you heard this story, but they sold them for 10 pound like pure, <laughs> pure, purely because somebody put a decimal point in the wrong place in a spreadsheet. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, that's a, a high profile case, but it happens. I and mean, we had a, we were in a workshop yesterday where a client was doing some uh, analysis on why certain um, items were, where where the sales were down, uh, and he was analysing the website to see if the the product listings were were optimal. Um, and he noticed that one shirt in particular was was down in sales. When he checked the um, when he checked the product listing, the title of the product, uh, which was meant to be uh, a cotton Oxford shirt, but they'd missed the R in shirt. So it's it's errors like that were understandably product's not selling great um it's errors like that that just can't make it through the net if you're using a system like a pim whereas you're leaving it wide open for human error if you're using something like excel or um or whatever else they might be using so it's clear that having a pim rather than working on a spreadsheet which from my experience never as a merchandiser i might hasten to add or a buyer but my experience of working in offices with them, inevitably they're swearing about the fact the spreadsheet's broken. Um, but so the removing errors is certainly a very good reason to be using a PIM rather than a spreadsheet. Why else should they be, you know, should re- retailers be considering to move over? What are the other benefits of a- adopting a PIM approach rather than a uh, you know than an Excel approach? Yeah, good question. Um I think it- if, if you accumulate um, or a- aggregate every single potential need for a PIM, they typically fall into two areas, um, one of which is increasing the sales. So amongst other reasons, but reducing errors, um, making sure there's no missing images, improving the experience that a consumer has online will undoubtedly increase the sales conversions. The second area, which is arguably more um, simple for people to link uh, to a PIM system, is improving the productivity. So if you think again, going back to, to spreadsheets, when people were first moving into um, the e-commerce world, whether that's recently because their hands have been forced due to the current pandemic and the COVID-19 situation, or whether it's 15 years ago, what they very quickly realize is e-commerce platforms are not there um, to help you manage your catalogs. They're there to put your products in front of the consumer. They are not there to make your lives easier in terms of getting the data from the suppliers, categorizing the products quickly, um, bulk editing information. So not only that, the e-commerce platform in the main is only feeding your website. It's very rare, even e-commerce self-proclaimed pure players are normally selling or have some activity in other channels as well, whether that's Amazon or eBay or other marketplaces, whether it's Instagram and social media, whether it's print catalogs or stores, whatever that might be. So typically what would happen is people would just fall and lean on what they knew best, which was Excel. Now, um, the errors we've, we've already talked about, if you think about the complexity that we just described, that you're not only having to create one catalog within Excel, but if you then duplicate that out, because if you're selling on Amazon, that has the right, uh, that has its own structure and own rules, as opposed to the pretty much a free-for-all you can put whatever you want on your own website um instagram has its own structure the print catalog obviously has its own structure in the sense that you want high-res images or or a finite amount of text so just on multiplying the products per channel you've just multiplied the, the amount of spreadsheets if you're selling for example not just in the uk but you need to translate the information to french and spanish and german you're multiplying that again so the productivity is a major issue because there's unnecessary duplication across the entire process. Um, but equally, it's you have no quality control. Um, it's not scalable um, for the business. So a big part around what we're seeing um, in, in recent weeks, purely because of coronavirus, is, um, and again, it, it falls into the increasing sales side, is the agility uh, that a PIM provides an organization. So we have um, a lot of organizations that, again, their hands have been forced. Maybe they were just 
high street retailers that were using the PIM to feed their points of sale, um, or um, we have a lot of organizations in the food industry that are wholesalers providing food and beverages to the hotel and restaurant industry. Obviously, that revenue stream is completely gone um, because hotels and restaurants aren't open at the moment. So using the PIM, they've managed to do a, a quick 180 and change the information that was going to their B2B network and quickly spin up a um, a B2C store and feed that with the the information. So uh, that's probably a, a long way of me answering um, increasing sales, increasing productivity, um, and, and the agility it gives. James, it occurs to me that another angle at the moment it would make a lot more streamlined and a lot more productive for the team would be the remote working angle because presumably everyone can access it from wherever they are. And because you've got those checks and balances built in, you can let people get on with things. You can be alerted. You know, it's kind of almost like a team management tool to some extent, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, one of the biggest parts around the PIM is it, this is a a collaboration. So w- what we do in the and when I'm saying we, this is not just Akinia. This is the wider um, PIM theory and, uh, and practice. Is we look into the roles that everyone has with um, managing a product information. So right from uh, for brands, if that's coming from your internal design team, whether you're a distributor or retailer, where you're having to first interact with the suppliers, we follow that process right from the point of inception and point genesis of product right through to it going live. And what we would define is who plays which role in all of that because a merchandiser is not going to need to input or manage the same information that a buyer wouldn't and a buyer wouldn't have any uh, interaction with the product images that that will go to the graphics team so first we define who plays what role within the overall process and then the system will automatically distribute the data so every, every time a new product is ready to be launched it will automatically distribute the relevant attributes and information that needs to be created to those people so it's collaborative in the sense that they're all working on the same product at the same time. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if you believe the um, processes that we see. Um, obviously, pre-PIM, uh, some of the largest organisations um, in the UK are still using paper-based sign-off. So, when they're creating a new product, if they create mood boards, they're literally handing um, kind of an A4 piece of paper around the office for people to sign to say that they're happy for us to put that into production. Obviously, that now can't happen because we're all remote working. So these are the kind of tasks that because the quality controls and checks and automation is in the PIM, it, it makes that all a lot easier. And I guess once you've got the system streamlined, and you've got the team working together in this more productive way where people are, you know, they're less worried about where the piece of paper gone has gone that's, that's supposed to be traveling around the office and more worried about increasing the, the quality of the product. Presumably that can make quite a big impact on how quickly a product can go from mood board to selling. Yeah, significantly. Uh, I mean, one of the, the cornerstones of of a PIM system is speed. So obviously we've talked about productivity, but but speed to market is a, a huge topic in most industries. If you think about uh, fast fashion at the moment, uh, like Primark or Boohoo or Misguided, uh, normally whoever gets that type of product, whether that's a shirt or a blouse or a dress, because they're based on current trends, normally the first person that gets a cost-effective item out to the market get the lion's share of that trend. So speed to market is prevalent, not just in fast fashion, but just just an example. In in terms of the PIM, one of the main benefits is having all of the products in one place, but also the, the benefit of allowing users to edit an unlimited amount of products. So for argument's sake, they could be editing 10,000 products in one go. Um, so something that would normally take days for them to complete in terms of getting their product ready to go live on site is now taking seconds. Um, but it goes a step beyond that there's also a rules engine you've already mentioned chloe a couple of times around the automation within the pim so the rules uh, the um, akinio system is powered by a rules engine that can automate a lot of the recurring tasks so a lot of the menial tasks that we might not necessarily think of when uh, an end user is launching a new product are things like um, categorizing the product um, making sure the seo is complete um, associating the product so uh, if there's an out of stock item a substitution is offered or a cross sell opportunity now a lot of that is actually automated by the pim so what we find is a lot of the teams that we're actually working with have very highly skilled marketers or e-commerce professionals that they're just treating or, or using as data entry clerks purely because it just all needs to be done at a quick pace. 
Now, the fact that a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the PIM allows them to take a step back and actually focus on adding more value to the experience because the, the, naturally the, the, the speed to market is going to significantly increase. Now, James, we've spoken about a lot of different ways in which um, in which a, a PIM can almost take people out of the dark ages, uh, you know, the paper and paper and shared hard drive based world of things, and take them into into the future and enable them to put in place. And it was, I love the way you explained the difference between PXM and PIM earlier. So enable them to actually implement improved product experience management, the PXM side of things. But as I mentioned earlier, you've helped a lot of retailers start using this type of software you've helped a lot of retailers make that shift what's the what, what do you find and maybe it's different things for every business but what is it that makes the quickest biggest impact for them when they make that shift um i, I think in terms of immediate impact it's, it's it's hard to name one i think they'd also be different if we're talking about the the senior team and wider organization the immediate impact they have um but i think for now i'd just focus on the end user impact because uh, at the end of the day, they're the guys that are on the front line and and working day in day out with with these issues. I think a big issue that is often overlooked by management is just how long it can take for an employee to find the the necessary data that they need to work with, uh, and and it accumulatively wastes hours in every employee's week. So, um, if you think about launching a new product, and if you think that you might need to chase down suppliers for product information. Uh, maybe the photographs are stored locally on the, the graphics team computer. The technical dimensions are on an old PDF from a from a price list. Uh, the price is in the ERP. That's if you're lucky that they're actually there. Normally, it's a lot of chasing and trying to find the relevant information. So one of the biggest impacts that we see with the, um, the actual people that are working on the product information is having all of that information under one roof. Now, I already mentioned there that not only is it in one place, but also you can then cut and slice the data instantly to work on what you need and then do work on products and edit products en masse, if not automatically. So it might not necessarily sound revolutionary, but these types of issues are, are contributing to 70 to 80% of these employees' times per week. So by the fact that we're freeing up that time, um, uh, they can then start to work on creating a better product experience for, for the consumers when they go onto their website or, or, or their mobile app or wherever it might be. Um, I think from, a, from just going on to the um, the wider organization immediate impact, um, it probably comes back to the, the point that I made earlier around what we're seeing in terms of agility, uh, the fact that it's allowing organizations to pivot their business into new channels. I mean, we were seeing it with Brexit, the fact that uh, UK organizations were venturing more into international marketplaces like Bold.com or um, Lazada. And, and now with COVID, we're seeing it in terms of uh, brand new channels. So sort of high street retailers it might be the first time they've ever had to venture into an e-commerce website for B2B retailers. If their revenue stream is dried up, they will have to um, survive by trying to make money through B2C network. And with the PIM, immediately, as soon as that data is structured and ready and implemented within the PIM system, they can just plug in that to, to whatever channel they need to sell into. And the, the data is such a central part of all e-commerce, well, all businesses now. If you've got the data in the right formats, it makes life so much easier. So, um, so James, tell us, Akinio, how can the listeners get in touch with you if they want to find out more about it? And do you want to give us a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of the business too? So uh, I appreciate a lot of your listeners. Um, this may be their first foray into into PIM. Um, I would definitely encourage uh, them to do some some research if they go on to um, our website, which is akinio.com, but in particular to focus on our resource center. Um, so we have akinio.com forward slash resource hyphen center. Um, and much to the behest of, uh, of me, that's sent us about the American way. So that's C-E-N-T-E-R. Um, and that has a lot of information in terms of white papers, analyst reports, webinars, um, ranging from this is the first information you're ever receiving from PIM right through to making sure you're choosing the right PIM for your organization. In terms of uh, Akinio, we are uh, something that we've, we've not talked about, which is um, something that we're, we're very proud of, uh, and it's an intrinsic part of our business, is that we are an open source PIM. 
So uh, with that, it, I'm sure many of you will be familiar with uh, nuts and bolts of what makes a, an open source um, technology. If you're not, in essence, what it's really saying is if you go to a restaurant and you can see the chefs and um, the chefs preparing your food out in the open, you feel a lot more comfortable than if you can't see what's going on in the kitchen. Exactly the same premise with open source. So open source, really, all the code that is behind the Akinio PIM is open to the public. The benefits that we get from that is we have a large community of over 3,000 developers, business users, C-suite professionals that are helping us to improve and develop um, the system itself. Um, and and because of that, we um, we have great connectivity into other platforms, uh, such as the e-commerce, uh, most of the major e-commerce platforms uh, globally. We have a very aggressive and agile roadmaps. So we launch new features and functionality every month. And I'd really just encourage that if you weren't aware of PIM or if it's not in your, your plans for 2020 or 2021, it's just to start researching into it. If you care uh, about what the analysts say in any form, uh, the analysts predict by, by next year, 50% of all organizations uh, will be using the software. Obviously, not just Kinos, but PIM in general. So um, it, it really is a when rather than an if conversation. So um, by all means, check out the website. If you need uh, any information directly or have any questions for myself directly, um, my email address is james.barlow at akinio.com. Excellent. So I, I love the fact you've got that resource center. And, you know, as you said, wherever anyone is on their buying journey, that's clearly the place to start. For those of you who are wondering how to spell it all, um, it's Akinio, which is A-K-E-N-E-O dot com forward slash resource dash center, which is C-E-N-T-E-O. Oh, I think I got that right, James. Yep, perfect. Yep, cool. That was really interesting, James. I had a couple of things I just wanted to add into the mix. You know, like earlier on, you mentioned about plugging in and you, you talked earlier about being able to integrate with your channels or whatever it might be. I'm just thinking this picture in my head. You're a, you're a large enterprise business. You've got massive amounts of channels, marketplaces, EPOS, whatever it might be. You've got loads of back-end stuff as well. Mm -hmm. so do you, has, has Akinio basically integrate with like the world? Is it, is, it, is it already done? I mean, when you just say plug it in, do you, have you done everything already been there in that sense? There's, there's no real um, inherent benefit around a PIM if you're not going to plug it into something. Otherwise, it's just a data repository. Mm -hmm. uh, which I guess does have its benefits in itself. What, one of the aims of um, Akinio, and, and to some extent we're, we're already on that journey and already there, is we want to be the most connected PIM in the world. Uh, and by that, what we mean is a, a typical path would be that the PIM sits in the middle. On your, uh, if, you, if you think about a rudimentary architecture diagram, so the PIM would be in the middle. On the right-hand side are all of your sales channels. So anywhere that, that data needs to go. So that might be just marketing brochures. It might be e-commerce, B2B, B2C, marketplace, et cetera. On the left-hand side, feeding the PIM, because a big, a, a big piece around the whole PIM project is we don't want any duplication. So if it makes more sense, for example, to manage pricing or stock control within the ERP, we recommend keep that in the ERP. And then as soon as that's created, automatically bring that into the PIM. So with a PIM project, they'll typically be at least two connections, one to the ERP, one to the e-commerce platform. But we have an open API. So we have a, a marketplace, which is marketplace.sakinio.com. So uh, uh, again, coming back to the open source point, um, we have a lot of partners. We have a lot of uh, people within our community that are proactively building connectors into different pieces of software. So if you're looking for connectors into the majority of major e-commerce platforms, they will already exist. So Magento, Salesforce, Big Commerce, they're all on the, the marketplace. If there isn't one already there, chances are we can um, uh, we, we will be able to create that connection. So the end, the end goal is Akinio is feeding any of your end sales channels. Absolutely. No, that makes sense. And one other thing I was going to ask was you, we mentioned about how, how it will help the business and who it helps. Um, but I'm interested in, from your experience and, and your customers, what, what sort of business in terms of its stature, will get the the best out of something like Akinio, do you, you know, from your experience? <laughs> There, there is generally no exact science um, or no true answer to this because I think when people think about PIM, they immediately think of 
huge blue chip organizations that are selling millions of products globally um and and that that obviously is a case because their 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 complexity is huge we we work with clients that um only sell 100 products but their complexity their complexity comes in terms of the amount of different channels they need to sell into um not not just in terms of marketplaces and websites and the fact that they need to um, reformat that data for each one of those channels but also the complexity can come in terms of they're also selling in france germany and spain so they need to um, translate that three or four times so there's no exact science i mean it would be a hugely opportunistic answer if i just said anyone that sells anything needs a pim uh, i mean that, that, yeah. that is my that is my extremely biased view but um i think if you're finding out that there are pain points when you're creating the product information, PIM is something you're you're going to inevitably need to uh, need to explore. No, makes sense, makes sense. And just my final thing, um, I always like to ask this to to the thought leaders that we have. Um, obviously, I mean, I don't know the market that well, but clearly there there are multiple product information management tools out there. I assume you know, in in, in the same as in in our space, right? Um, if if you could tell our listeners what you feel would be the unique reasons why they ought to be talking to you guys um, over and above the other players in, in your space? What, what would you, how would you say that? Firing the good questions at me today. Um, <laughs> so, so I think it, it's, it's important to mention, I appreciate I'm not going to get my soapbox for too long on this, but um, it's important to mention a bit around our, our background. Um, again, we're, we're a relatively new organization. So we're in our seventh year now. Um, our founders uh, were working uh, in the e-commerce industry, but under a, sl- a slightly different guise as a systems integrator, primarily working with open source technology. So when they were going on site and building e-commerce projects, whether that was fashion retail, or whether it was a B2B building supplies manufacturer, what they were finding is every project they were launching had major issues when it came to product information. And the management of that product information. So it, this comes back to the, the the points we raised at the start that people were typically leaning on what they knew best, which was Excel, um, which had its own um, secondary issues. Now, when we, when they started to do research um, around what were the alternatives to Excel in those days, kind of pre the birth of PIM, uh, was a piece of software called Master Data Management. Uh, and what that did a great job at is bring all of the data from disparate systems under one roof, not not just product data, but customer data, sales data, finance data, et cetera. Now, what we felt they were short-sighted on is they were very tech-heavy platforms, primarily aimed at tech people. Uh, and it's very rarely going to be your IT managers, your IT project managers are actually going to be sat there enriching product data and doing the SEO information and doing the marketing copy. Um, And there was no system that was purely aimed at making the end user's life easy. So if anyone sees the um, Akinio platform, I I hope they'll, they'll agree. The UX, the UI has all been designed around being as close to plug and play as possible so that we can ensure that this is a, a well-adopted system and becomes an intrinsic part of, uh, of their day-to-day. So um, I, I would say if you're looking for something that is extremely user-friendly, there's not a huge learning curve um, and you can quickly start reaping the benefits of having a PIM system, then uh, the, then Akinio would be a good place to start looking. Makes sense. Thanks, James. Excellent. Well, James, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. It's been fascinating learning about an area which, like Phil says, I, I know I vaguely knew it existed, but I definitely didn't know, <laughs> know enough. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming on and, and giving us such such great insight into the the PIM space. It's been really it's been really good. Thanks, James. No, likewise. Thank you. So fascinating to hear of all those ways in which just one software system can make a huge difference to what happens behind the scenes in the e-commerce business in order to make a massive difference what happens on the front end in terms of customer experience, sales, and much more, as well as team sanity. Um, But Phil, what were your key takeaways from that one? Um, I think it opened up my eyes a bit because, as as you were saying, I have heard of PIM. But I didn't, it's like anything, isn't it? I suppose you're not in that world. You don't you don't realize what it actually is and what impact it actually has until you're kind of in it. 
And I think what James did was have brought it to light for me, what exactly it is and how powerful it is. And I was interested because the thing he said about everyone sort of immediately kind of jumps this idea that it's about a blue chip company with millions of products selling to like millions of channels. And that's exactly the picture in my mind. I was thinking, oh my word, these are guys that have got tens of thousands of products they're selling in all over the world and they've got so much stuff to have to do. But then he was saying like, actually, it goes across the board. You could be a brand with a small number of products, but because you've got to manage language in 10 different countries and territories and you can't just magic that out of the air, you need something to try and make that more efficient without wasting your probably very small team's time on trying to get spelling right or or you know whatever you're you're going to be spending your whole life doing trying to keep the products um you know in the multiple channels right and then i was sort of then thinking hold on a minute what happens if you're on loads of marketplaces and and you've got then loads of different brands and sub brands on different websites or so i suddenly realized actually there must be a massive amount of work that goes into um, controlling that product information. And like, there are so many other areas, isn't it? Like whether you look at personalization or you look at any other sort of tech side of things, when you look at this e-commerce management team or the merchandising team or whatever you call it, I found that there's so much these guys have got to try and do. And, and, and now while I'm realizing that while there is so much to do, um, these platforms significantly help to just make the job kind of achievable right in the first place when it's like you it's not just that there's so much to do there's so much to do on every single product and until that product finishes selling the list of things to do on that product doesn't end so it's it's endless the amount of work that needs to go on and anything which can can make that more efficient because otherwise as a, a as I think James said, you know, the entire team gets sucked into tasks that have to be done just to enable things to work, not even to make things work well, which is, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of soul destroying in a job when that's all you're doing. Oh, completely. Thanks for listening to this episode of the E-Commerce Growth Show podcast. Don't forget, you can get all the information about the series at segmentify.com forward slash podcast. And we would love to hear what you think. If you're listening via Apple Podcasts, the easiest way to do that is via the review button. Put us to the test and let us prove we can drive more revenue for you. Sign up for a completely free proof of concept or split test against your current provider. Set up and optimized by our team within a few days at segmentify.com slash demo.